Welcome to Time to Write. I'm Emily Robertson. And I'm Amy Kelly. We are professional writers and critique partners. We've worked in traditional and independent publishing, podcasting, and social media marketing. Including my novel, Lifestyles of Gods and Monsters, published by Big Five Publisher. My long-running podcast, In the Middle of It. And Accomplished Authors, my business helping authors create an inspiring online presence. We are here to share our creative journeys and encourage you on yours. From the writing process to promoting your work and all of the messy in between, we're here to remind you that your story matters and it's worth sharing with the world. Okay, it's It's time time to to write. write. Well, hey there, and welcome back to Time to Write. I'm here with Emily, and I'm Amy, and we are going to talk about some really fun stuff today and kind of walk you through a workshop for our own stuff. But before we get started, Em, why don't you jump in and tell us your high-low for the week? Okay, so my high was, it was Easter here, um, uh, and uh, my kid who's in college came home for the weekend, and it was really great to see him. Very. Fun. And my fun. low is tethered to another high, which I'll mention in the book portion at the end, is that I just finished a book called um, no, I, Perfectionist's Guide to Losing Control. That's what it's called. <laughs> and it was really good. But she talks about this idea of process perfectionism. And that one of the things, and I totally identify as perfectionist, um, which I didn't know until I started reading about it. But yeah, I totally am one. Um And what she talks about is that there's the thing that perfectionists get into. It's not just that you're stuck on like the quality that the thing should have. It's that you're stuck on the length of time it should take you to do it. Oh my gosh. Which is called process perfectionism. And so she was saying she has clients who will spend seven years to do something, which she's like, that's totally fine. But two of the seven years are spent being mad that it took five. Right, right. And right. so realizing that I was planning to nano the book that I'm pitching to you guys today and to acknowledge that having a tornado hit your town is the sort of thing that may slow down your nano rhymo <laughs> plans. And Just that, that is totally fine. And understanding that, like, The part of my brain that wants to keep working, great, amazing. She's great. She's not bad. We can jot down ideas. But I'm the person who, as Amy could tell you, took a notebook into the hospital before my thyroid surgery because I thought I might get some work done. Yeah. So just really looking at that and being like, what is going, not what is going on with that and like, oh, what's wrong with you way, but like, wow, like that's a really a lot of unnecessary pressure to put on myself when- Right. Yeah. What I love about that, it's it kind of, if people are familiar with the internal family systems kind of mode of counseling, I think you identified like you have that part of you and you are able to say, okay, perfectionist, process perfectionist, Emily, yeah. to have you sit in the back seat for a while. <laughs> right. We're going to just take a minute and remember that like... There's yeah. a lot going on. And it, yeah. and it doesn't have to be a tornado. It doesn't well, have to be a tornado. Right. Well, and that's what I was going to say. Like, it's funny you say that because I was planning on nanoing and I am writing this month and I'm trying to use it just as a tool for motivation and accountability and all that. But yeah, it hasn't worked out how I thought it would. And I had to practice telling process perfectionist Amy <laughs> I like to also call her shamey for all the lovely <laughs> shame she jumps she dumps on me. So you know, um, shamey and shemily. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So she's sitting in the closet in timeout right now. <laughs> right, exactly. Take a minute, sister. Yeah, got you. Exactly. Um, so so that this book for anybody who wants to read this book, I really enjoyed it. I read it like super fast, but one of the things she talks about is that, um, those of us who are maladaptive perfectionists, um, as opposed to adaptive, which they do exist, um, 
tend to show up with punishment and blame when things don't go the way they're expected, as opposed to self-compassion. So working on those self-compassion Right. Muscles. Wow. Like thinking about that, maybe I should take that part of me out of the closet. I was like, so don't put her in the <laughs> don't closet. Don't put her in time just, out. Just she's, she's, let yeah. her know she's got important things to say. Yes. And I'm going to tuck her in and let her take a nap for a little except while. Except she needs to have a nap. She I a nap. lately have been thinking like about... I about the idea of like uh giving her a job like oh that's a good you know, idea there's this really important job over there you know you yeah. can watch out for tigers if any tigers show up you are on it yes jump on it on top I of mean, it not on top of the tiger but right you know. but just let me give me a heads up <laughs> So anyway, that was my high and low for the week. So awesome. on to the topic of the day. Well, I, can I do my high oh, and low? No, no, you cannot. <laughs> yes, of course you can. Amy's high and low. <laughs> well, I know you're so excited. I'm excited too about to get to get to what we're talking about. But so I'll be really quick. My high was I um, hosted a meeting for a, um, I guess it's like a mastermind group of writers that is um, being put together through Art House Dallas. And we actually got to have the event at my husband's office, which is a great meeting space. So I was super excited to be able to share that. And it was so fun to get to know all the people who are part of the group. And we'll be meeting like once a month for, um, I can't remember. I don't, I'm not going to do the math on it, but like through November and possibly more if we decide we want to continue on. So that was super, super fun. Yeah. Yeah. Loved it. Loved it. And then, um, my low was kind of the opposite of M's like, um, my kids weren't able to be home for Easter and Easter is one of kind of my favorite holidays. And so my son was supposed to be here, but he had gotten sick. So he had to stay at school and kind of finish some stuff up. And then my daughter, of course, is not coming home just for the weekend from California. So, so it was just my husband and I, which was nice, but you know, I miss, yeah. I miss dying eat and not that we have dyed Easter eggs since they were little bitty, but I would do it every year and just kind of, you know, forced family fun every once in a while. I <laughs> so. feel like as a side note that you should just dye some Easter eggs next year, or maybe even go to the store and get the kits that are now marked way way down right and, and do eggs. it and do it yeah and I have done that in the past I just yeah. this week I just think that's fun. really fun yeah I love dying easter eggs it's so yeah. fun so, yeah um, and I hardly ever e even boil eggs anymore because you can buy the ones that are already yeah. boiled from Costco yeah <laughs> Okay. Nobody right, so, in my house but me eats hard boiled eggs. So when oh. we do it, I just end up like eating eggs on the I'm just like so tired of eggs by the yeah, end. So. I bet you are. Uh, okay. Okay. So we're gonna jump into our topic, which is drumroll, please, doing pitches for the work that you are doing, whatever your work in progress is. So so um Amy, for starters, what's a pitch? <laughs> So it is sharing what your book is about in very specific terms in order to generate interest in the other, in the person you're speaking to. Right. I, would you say that's kind of Absolutely. a fair? Okay. And it sort of starts from the idea of an elevator pitch and an elevator pitch is the idea yeah. for an elevator pitch for someone who doesn't know is to imagine you're standing next to someone waiting to get on the elevator and they say, what are you working on? And you are trying to get their interest enough to grab it in that amount of time it waits from when you push the button until the elevator arrives. Right, right. And right. why would aspiring authors need to have a pitch? Well, if you are wanting to get published, then you want to be sharing about your book, one, with your friends and family. And they're going to ask, like we've talked about this on previous shows, like when you say you're a writer, then they're going to ask, what are you writing? So a pitch is something that's really handy to have to answer that question. But once you get to the point where you are wanting to pitch to agents and to editors, you really have to have it. Right. Basically. Well, and, and also, I would say it's a huge help in meeting other authors. You're going to meet other right. authors, whether at now or I went to, a, oh, this was another high. I went to a bookstore event on Saturday for um an Arkansas author who's just released his second book. And um, 
ran into a woman that I've met several times who is, um, has an agent now and is on submission and introduced her to some other writers I know. And like, people want to know what's your book in that yep. situation, whether you have a book that's on submission or whether you're just writing something. So it, it can feel early days, very much like you're on the spot that it's not about being on the spot. It's about kind of having yeah. your arms around what you're writing. Well, and I, I think that's another like unexpected piece of value there too, because to be able to write a pitch, you really have to clearly identify several things. Oh, yeah. All right. If you're like, watching on YouTube, you'll see Emily just flashed the timer. 20? I uh, guess. Well, I don't do know what time we started. 25. Let's do 25. 25. Okay. All right. Just. <laughs> Oh, Podcast gosh. toast. All right. Yes. Sorry. Yes. So, okay. So there are some very like essential, like boiled down parts. And when you have to identify those that for me, it really helps clarify just <clears throat> and remind me of what I'm wanting to write. It, right. It, it forces you to really make some decisions if you haven't already. Right. Right. So what, and I would say for people, I remember the first, the other great place for pitches is for conferences. When you go to mm. conferences, which I think both Amy and I, we will do a future episode and we should put this in the thing. Oh yeah. We keep forgetting. To yes. Put, we tell you guys we're going to do a future episode and then we forget to what write it down. We said, um, going to conferences, having the first conference I went to, which was a SCBWI society of children's books, writers and illustrators conference. And I realized, oh, I had really not thought about a pitch. And so I meet people and they'd say, what do you write? And I was like, uh, you know, just like, <laughs> oh, like what are you writing? Because you end up being like, well, it's a book. If you haven't thought about it a little bit, you end up like this. It's a book about a girl and she lives in this town. <laughs> You're like a toddler narrating their dream. Like that is not the goal here. Oh, you make me laugh hard. All right. She yeah. woke up one day and no, 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 no. <laughs> yeah. It's about a teenager who has a mom. Yeah, exactly. It's a <laughs> troubles <laughs> so um there's magic it's right, speculative fiction and then you get what speculative fiction i don't really know how I to don't tell you know. <laughs> i'm just making things up right now um so uh so the great news is you don't actually have to make this up from scratch there are some great formulas out there and amy has done some research and found some and she and i just in the guinea pig mode are both working on things that are new. And so we are going to talk through our pitches in the way that we would encourage you guys to talk through your pitches. My Amy's been thinking about hers. Mine, this thing is brand new. So yeah, I kind of love that though. I kind of love that because yeah. I think, I think you're going to nail it. So, okay. So this is actually the research that I did was kind of combing through some of my notes and, and you were talking about, um, conferences. And I actually got a handout from a pre-conference class that I went to many years ago. Actually, it's where I met our critique group partner, our other one, for the first time. And it was all about how it was before the conference. And they were like, here's how you pitch your book. And so, okay. um, and so they really just talk a lot about being prepared, being pithy. I love that word. Um, and then being professional and practicing and that kind of thing. So I, what I love about it is it's kind of a, a template that you can use to plug in your own story. So the template goes like this, like the hero wants blank, um, but and she finds herself, and this would be the external conflict. At first she and this would be an exciting, inciting event, if I can say that right. And she has to, and this is the goal, but in the end, she learns that, and this would be your theme, right? And and I will say, like I've worked on mine a little bit. I did it because I didn't know if I would need it at the meeting that I was just talking about, that Art House Dallas thing. Um, it It follows that somewhat, but not completely. And I think the goal for me is always to kind of really include um, the exciting piece, the the exciting pieces that make it different from the other books, right? Like, what would you say for that, Em? 
Yeah. And I say also that, um, if you have a really different hook, because, um, one of the things about lifestyles of gods and monsters is, um, the pitch for that is totally different because the idea for lifestyles of gods and monsters is it's reality TV meets Greek mythology meets the hunger games. And so for that, the pitch, the premise kind of is the pitch right for that first. And then if you're really going to talk about the book, you need to know all that stuff. Who's the main character or what do they want? and all those kinds of things. And I would say what you're talking about, the reality TV meets Greek mythology meets the hunger games. That's your, that's a hook. Hook. Yeah. Like, and you want to have that too, right? You, and and it kind of fits in with what we were talking about in the episode about comps, right? um, Where you're really just trying to figure out where it fits and, and just that quick, um, quick way to let, somebody know where your book is positioned and what it's about. And then the elevator pitch is kind of the deeper, not that it's so deep because it's, you do only want it to be a couple of sentences really, right? Right. Like something that you can say within like 20 to 30 seconds. Right. Yeah. So let's hear what you drafted for. Okay. Yeah. And, and yes. And let's just make sure we all understand that it is a draft. Yes. And Okay. So my computer shut down a second ago, so I'm having to pull it back up. So bear with me. Oh, actually I have it right here. So a 17 year old girl who lost her father in an accident that was her fault, tries to find redemption by creating a cure for her mother who's dying of cancer. Even if it means breaking out of her overprotective bubble and diving into a world of science and magic that her mother has forbidden her to enter. And M already has made some suggestions on that because I have not included everything that I want to in it. Right. Like I need right. to definitely refine it. So. And I think like, I think that's like an awesome start. And also I think this is actually, especially if you're in an industry setting in your pitch, a great opportunity to actually say in my YA novel or in right. my YA right. speculative fiction novel or in my so you want your genre and audience as well, for yeah, sure. Yeah, I just yeah. think it, it's super helpful to people just because um, your goal, there's a couple different goals you have. One of them is to get people interested in reading it, buying it, whatever. The other is to connect with people that, you know, that either write similar stuff or would like to read it or stuff like that. And that's where <laughs> genre can actually be helpful Right. Just for you to kind of know. And I would say the other big thing, which Amy, read that last sentence again. <laughs> okay. Um, let's see. Okay. Even if it means breaking out of her overprotected bubble and diving into a world of science and magic that her mother has forbidden her to enter. I love that. And I think that the, the, the big thing also to make sure, which Amy really has done here is to make sure that you can feel your protagonist's action through that pitch. Because one of the biggest dangers is if you realize your whole pitch is just things that happen to your protagonist rather than them acting, people don't, I mean, people that have been doing this a long time know why that feels off, but um, people who aren't, industry people won't know why that feels off to them, but like, we want stories where protagonists protagonate, <laughs> you know, did you know where protagonists come from? No. It Enlighten comes me. from the Greek root of agon, which means do. Oh. So your protagonist is by their nature, the doer. The doer. They're the oh. doer. And, and now my brain goes to, is it related to agony? Like, yeah. awesome. Yeah. I love trials. That. Okay. Yeah. Totally a word nerd. So yeah, I could, That's we could spend a whole episode on that. All right. Uh, okay. So I think, and, and we talked about this, um, earlier in the week or last week. Um, one thing that I haven't captured here in this is the fact that my protagonist has her own powers that mm-hmm. have been stifled that she's going to have to pull out and figure out how to use. She didn't even know she had them. 
So, so that last sentence isn't diving into a world. It is right. using the powers that her mother has forbidden her to use. Yes. Yes. She's to save her mother's life. She will have to use the powers her mother has forbidden her to use. Right. Um, to use. Yeah. All right. I'm going to type that real quick so that I can <laughs> I can read it here to a second. Uh, if I seem a little happy today, it's because I am leaving for a trip tomorrow and I'm super excited. All right, just a little aside. All right. Yeah. So, okay. So I would say a gr- in my YA story. Novel. Novel. A 17-year-old girl who lost her father in an accident that was her fault tries to find, and sorry, again with the mouse, um, in an accident that was her fault, tries to find redemption by creating a cure for her mother who's dying of cancer, even if it means breaking out of her overprotected bubble and using the magic her mother has forbidden her to use when she dives in. I don't think you need, I think you can just leave it. Okay. So, and it could be also, you could say it means diving into a world of science and magic and using her own untapped magical powers that her mother has forbidden her right. to access. Okay, so this is something that I think is important to point out too, because for me, the part about science is super important because I really want it to be a STEM book, like a you know science, technology, et cetera, et cetera. So I really want to make sure that I get in something about science. So I would, I yeah. would be... It means, even if it means diving into a world of science and magic and using her own powers. And previously untapped. You let your adjectives do some work. Yeah, previously untapped. Magic. That her mother has forbidden her to use. Yes. Sorry. Sorry, I know this is probably a little tedious, but if it gets us to the end. the goal here, people, and I'm going to talk while she's typing, is to get your target audience, which we've talked about before in a previous podcast, Mm -hmm. to Mm -hmm. sit forward. That is the goal. That's the whole goal. And you don't care if you're not target audience sits backward right because to really reinforce something i have said 200 times but i will keep saying it it is as important for the people that aren't your target readers to know that as it yes. is for your target readers to know that absolutely because ending up in the wrong batch can cause you more trouble than anything because then you're getting reviews from people that are like this fantasy novel this novel is way too long mm-hmm. but if it's a fantasy novel it's not because there's no such thing as a too long it's a too fantasy long. novel right. right right so that is that's yeah. why we really everybody's impulse to be like oh no no it's for everybody it's for everybody it's not it's nothing is for everybody it is it is for the thing that the reader that you want it to will sit forward yes that's and the thing. and i'm just gonna say this probably it might be for the first time but it will not be the last if you're writing for everybody you're writing for nobody yeah right okay i'm gonna share kind of the edited version and see where we are. All right. In my YA novel, 
A 17-year-old girl who lost her father in an accident that was her fault tries to find redemption by creating a cure for her mother who's dying of cancer. It means diving into a world of science and magic and using her own previously untapped magic that her mother has forbidden her to use. Ding, ding, ding. Ding, 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 ding. ding. as a full paid member of the target audience, I am leaning right into that. (laughs) Well, thank you, friend. I'm excited. I'm excited um, about and it. And so for me, we're going to be like, I'm like I say, early stages of drafting. What I can say for sure is, so I'm going to start with setting because that is. Oh yeah. Um, that's super important. Super yeah. important to this, which is so, and since I have not, don't really have a pitch yet, we're kind of, kind of talk it through and see if we can. Yeah. Pull it, it into this box. Yes. Which a box, you guys, a box, I really do want you to think about a box, like, or the back of a book cover, or like, that's what we're doing here. That a novel itself is a sprawling thing. A novel, a work in progress is a sprawling thing. But the more that we can kind of know what we're doing, even when you're working in progress, I was listening to the Screenwriting Life podcast, which there was an excellent episode last week. And this one author was saying, she tries to identify the theme of her work in progress really early and she writes it on the top of the page and every scene as she's drafting, she can ask herself, does this tie into the theme? I love that. Because if it doesn't, you don't need it. Yeah. I love that. You just, this is, I mean, how long have I been writing a long time, but realizing that like scenes that don't tie to our theme, our characters, the things we care about, we don't have to write them. We can write a paragraph that says like, I mean, my character's going to take a transatlantic voyage. I feel like, which is what I'll get to here in a second. I feel like that chapter may be like the beginning of the chapter heading may say like, it was a long trip to France. (laughs) So, um, so my book is set in the 1920s. Okay, yes. before you jump in, that was so good that it I added a little something to my thing. It means my theme, learning to trust herself as she dives into a world of science and magic. Yes. She uses her own previously untapped magic. So yes. nailing the theme in the, that is really important too. So, right. and at, I mean, I just want to point out here too, to all our listeners, like, This might be a constantly evolving thing because as you, especially if it's a work in progress, because the further in you get, the more specific that you'll be able to be. Okay. And even I will say, and this, this is a side note about my TikTok, but I will say one of the most fun things to me about posting about lifestyles of gods and monsters on TikTok is, I I mean, I've been pitching this book since it came out in 2019. The pitch is still evolving because I can see what, because there's lots of things you can pitch about a story you can start to see what what makes people sit up and take notice what makes them sit back like what right what do they really care about like so okay but that is all off the topic so the topic (laughs) is so uh my book set in the 1920s 1920s early 1920s i have a main character named lucinda or lucy she goes by lucy um she is her grandmother is a witch. Her stepfather is a gangster. She lives in Hot Springs, Arkansas. And more than anything, she wants to go to Paris to be a poet and live among the artistic people. She wants to live an artistic life in a garret in Paris. She's got the whole thing imagined in her head. Unfortunately, her family would like for her to marry a very boring banker. To get to Paris... She steals them and she has magical powers because it's that kind of book because she's her grandmother's a witch. To get to Paris, she steals a magic necklace from her mother called the Heart's Desire, which both gives you what you want and takes something from you. And it it takes her closest friend from her. So she, who she thought she was going to go to Paris with. And instead she ends up in Paris alone and has to find her way through and um, sort of builds her artistic life, I guess, or finds her way through. This is the part where it's like the middle is the part where you start yeah. to go like, Bleh. anyway, <laughs> finds her way through. And then 
learns my theme is that is going to be about value about how we value ourselves how other people value us and so learns that like her value is more than the things she can make Ugh, I like love that. that your value is um, more than the things you can make totally your theme yes yeah, totally my theme and so so but when she's in Paris and this is the part when we're talking about um the Blake Snyder who wrote the Save the Cat book mm-hmm, mm-hmm. talks about the fun and game section of your outline, which is also part of your pitch. And these are what you would call the trailer moments. They're like, what would show up in the trailer? In a planet far away. Way. Yeah. <laughs> you definitely want to include a few of those in your pitch because again, they are, and this is Blake Snyder's term, the promise of the premise. Yes. Fun and games is the promise of the premise. So if I tell you Paris in the 1920s, you know, we're going to have parties. We're going to have people jumping in fountains. We're going to have flapper dresses. We're going to either go to the South of France or to Spain. I haven't decided which yet. Um, we're going to have writers and artists. We're going to have people behaving badly. Okay. All those different. We're going to have jazz. So I would ask first, I know you mentioned setting. Is that what you want to lead with? Or is that what you're going to, where do you want to put that piece of it in your pitch? Um, I would think, I feel like from the times I have talked about this. So everybody I know in my real life always wants to know what I'm writing. So I have been telling them, oh, it starts in Hot Springs, Arkansas, which Arkansas people are interested in. Um, And it's a super interesting town for anyone who doesn't know. Um, So I would say starting in Hot Springs, Arkansas and going to Paris in the 1920s, 24-year-old Lucy Black, what, wants to leave aside. Well, what Lucy wants more than anything is to shed her old life like an old pair of shoes and make a new life as an artist. That's what she wants. To do that, she wants to go to Paris because that's where the artists are. So she steals the necklace and starting from nothing, uh, I don't know. The thing is, this is where it gets so interesting, guys, because how different does it say, like, insinuates herself into (laughs) a world of writers and artists, wins a spot among the writers and artists, like, you start to see like your, how your, the, the verbs you choose. Definitely impact the way your story comes across, right? Right. She meets the writers and artists and makes her, you know. So, okay. So the little uh, sheet that I, I told you about has kind of the list of things. So I would say you've hit the character and right. they're important. And so Lucy Black wants to shed her life like a pair of old shoes, right? right? And then her internal goal would be to live uh, freely as an artist or a poet. Okay. An artist. And her external goal is would to get be to Paris. To get to Paris. Okay. I'm ready. I'm jotting all this down. And so um, the inciting incident, you've nailed that with the necklace thing. And, um, and then it's just the theme or, but, but when it happens. But when when she uh, reaches the pinnacle of success, um, she'll have to learn that people are more valuable than the things people including herself are more valuable than just the things they make learns people including herself are more valuable and she'll have to make hard choices that's the other thing is she has to make hard choices does she choose success or does she choose her values but that's not really fair because she's successful i want her to be successful too it's just understanding that like It's not, um, does she sacrifice her values to achieve a certain kind of success? Right, right. Um, And 
and like the journey she's on is to understand that a success that's gained by sacrificing your values isn't. Right. Um, Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I wonder if you separate hot springs and Paris and say, um, 24 year old Lucy black living, you know, like living a small life or living a, you know, a controlled life in hot springs, Arkansas wants to shed her past like an old pair of shoes or shed her. Yeah. yeah, As an old pair of shoes, she steals a necklace, um, so that she can run away to Paris and live freely as an artist. But when she reaches the pinnacle of success, she learns that people, including herself, are more valuable than the things that they make. Uh, But see, (laughs) you can see a little what what we don't get in there is the magic. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's one where as you guys are going through this, um, this is something where actually comp titles which you can totally mention in your pitch yes can yes. become really useful to you because like if i said to you in a story that recalls the invisible life of Addie larue you're yeah. gonna know that there's magic in it even even without saying it right even without me and if i say she steals a magical necklace if we just add magical to the necklace like right those things those kinds of things okay so what would you say your pitch is now like having gone through all that pitch me okay uh in the 1920s in and we got to get this into corrupt gangster ridden hot springs, Arkansas. Uh huh. Twenty <laughs> four year old Lucy Black wants to shed her old life like a pair of shoes, and live a new life as new free life as a poet. To do this, she steals a magical necklace and travels to Paris, where using her skills and her magic, she does use both. She achieves a pinnacle of success only to realize that people, including her, are more valuable than just the things they make. Yeah, I like it. I almost am curious if you maybe want to leave out that it's a magical necklace and you maybe want to just say magic. Yeah. Because I think the flavor of it as well for your book, um, and I have the privilege of having a behind the scenes front row right. seat of seeing you develop this. Um, I think the fact that she doesn't normally use magic, right? Yeah. Like she... It, oh, it's, she and there's really a reason and it. she hates using it. And I think you could really pull that in there, like using the magic that she hates, hates using, to, yeah, using the, the family magic that she hates. She makes her way to Paris. Like, right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's true. Yeah. So um, anyway, so this is just giving you guys like a kind of an idea about how you do this. And then, so what would people have, like, we love to tell you guys about mindset and some practical steps. So what is the most important mindset element, do you think, to doing this? Well, for me, I would say that you want to have the mindset that you can share your work, like, like share, at least share what you're working on. And even if people get that kind of glazed (laughs) look in their eye, like, Um, That has nothing to do with you, right? right? But you do, if you've identified who your ideal audience is, and you know people who fit in that, right? you want to share with them and see kind of how it plays and and ask for their opinion even on it. Like, would you want to read that or what, you know, would this make it more interesting or, or whatever? So I would say really get it down on paper, like, or, you know, in a document or whatever, really, um, write it out. Mm -hmm. And then I would say you want to write it out and memorize it because what's next would be, what do you think, Em? Practice, practice sharing it and practice sharing it. 
we, uh, I mean, Amy and I just bang this drum all the time, but from a spirit of play, you're not yes. getting tested. You're not getting like, even if let's say you go and you give a pitch at a pitch competition, which I think you've, have you done it? I've done it. I have not. I okay, have not. So I've, I've seen done it. it several times, uh, including when you go pitch to agents and editors. Also, um, I did I'm a at- pitch competition for that was, and it's, I have never had one go really stellarly. Like <laughs> Emily Robertson, published author, never really had this go like bang up yeah. great. Um, and so the thing, here's the other piece, and this is super important. A lot of people get afraid at this, I, this stage that someone might take your idea. Nobody's taking uh, your idea. Nobody's they're taking not, your idea. And even not. if they do, it will not be the same book. And so you yeah. can't, you just have to let go of that. And, fear. and I would say, let me just throw this in. Yeah. That's a mindset as well of scarcity and yep. There are enough stories and enough people to tell them to go on forever and ever and ever. So just let that go. And I think the other thing people get afraid of is being cliche. And at this point, it's going to be a little bit, right? Like it it is like, it just, this is, this is the part where, because just think it's either this or a toddler telling their dream. Right. Like, well, and also I just want to say a couple of things here too. Number one, before you practice sharing it with people, practice it in the mirror or pra- mm-hmm. picture recorded on your phone, whether you do that, just an audio recording or a video recording so that you can see how it sounds and you can get the pacing down and all that kind of thing. But, you know, you're saying that you haven't done great at pitching competitions, but what I remember very clearly is going to a, um, the DFW Writers Conference and they had the pitch contest that they do during one of the lunch yeah. events, right? And a guy got up there and read his pitch and it was so entertaining and so fun. And it was, it was really kind of like a, you know, a detective, a, you know, what is it like? Dick Tracy, you know, really heavy on the genre kind of stuff. It was so fun and so entertaining. And people stood up at the end and clapped. And they have three agents there on the stage that gong you when they would stop reading it. And they all listened all the way through. And every one of them said, yeah, no, we wouldn't have picked that because there's not a market for it right now. So it doesn't matter even that it's absolutely perfect. Right. Because there were some, like the people who actually won, theirs weren't necessarily perfect, but it was something that really interested those particular agents. Right. So you just never know what's going to hit. You right. never and, know. And I will say, like, I, I actually don't want to, like, I did get interest in Lifestyles of Gods and Monsters based on one of those. So clearly, I, clearly. Like, yeah. So yeah. I, I, it's just, um, it can feel like I remember one time I was at, uh, an SBWI thing. And I was working on a middle grade book at that point that has never sold, but I love, and I, at some point we will get it. So it'll, get there. it'll um, get there, but it's about a girl who realizes she's a changeling. And so I meet this other author and she's like, Oh my gosh, my book is about a girl who thinks she's a changeling. And I was like, <laughs> Oh, and then you no. start talking and it's <laughs> totally different. Like it's totally different. So, yes. and then if you do it right and you can shed your any scarcity elements, you might make a new friend. Exactly. Exactly. And like, I promise you, your fairy books are different. I promise you they are because your experience of fairies are different and you're, you know, all these things. So yes. All right. Yes. Wrapping up. Amy okay. Kelly, what are you reading? So I am actually reading a book called, um, oh gosh, it just, sorry. It just flew out of my head. It's called un- something uncobble un anyway it is a book written um written by a guy and it is about uh it's a it's nonfiction and it's about um how the church is dealing with the lgbtq community and where people can grow in that and you know, oh, I think that's, yeah, yeah. It's super interesting. You go ahead and tell us what you're reading and I'm looking uh, up the what book that I is. mentioned at the beginning. Oh, the right, 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 right. Perfectionist, Perfectionist Guide to Losing Control. And it is by, hold on. 
Hold on. Catherine Morgan Schaefer. Perfect. Catherine Morgan Schaefer. Perfect. The Perfectionist Guide to Losing Control. Yeah. Um, Which I'm totally going to download as soon as we get done here. Um, And the one that I'm reading is called Unclobber. And it's by Colby, C-O-L-B-Y Martin, which I thought was a great title, Unclobber. Yeah. So. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you guys. All right. We'll thank see you. you next week on another thrilling episode of Time to Write. And don't forget, <laughs> go write something. Go, go write, write something. Write yeah. Pitch. And when we get back, I'm sure one of my highs will be the trip that I'm on. I'll tell you about it then. And I have great plans to be able to write. Oh, you guys, you guys, if you have a pitch that you oh, develop yeah. based on our stuff, please send it to us. Yes, to we us. would love we that. Would we love would love to hear from you. Um, And we will, what, would we read it on the podcast? Yeah, why not? Yes, If you yes. want us to, we'll read it on the podcast. Yeah, so. let us know. We would love that. It would be yeah. so fun. So fun. Okay. Okay, and- one more thing. Don't forget, we do have a Patreon. So if you would like to support the podcast, you can find a link to that in um, wherever you're looking at your podcast, listening to your podcast. There should be a link in the little description. So we would Yay. so appreciate a cup of coffee yeah. from you. Please give us a All cup right. of coffee. Right. Bye. Bye. Thanks so much for being with us today. We love our people and we want to get to know you better. So email us at questions at time to write podcast.com to have your questions considered for the show. You can also suggest topics by emailing us there. Also drop us a review on Apple Podcasts. Not only will it thrill us. Seriously, we read everyone. It also helps others find the show. We're driven by sharing stories and your review helps us do that. Just remember your stories matter and we're rooting for you to find time to write. Even if it's only five minutes, five minutes, you can do it. You can do it.